How's it going you guys? It's Scott with Everyday Solar and today I want to answer the question of do installing solar panels on my home actually increase the value of my home? Now I'm in the state of Illinois. I'm a homeowner but also a real estate investor. I bought many properties over the years, single families, duplexes, triplexes, and even larger multifamilies. So I stay pretty up on the market seeing most of what sells in my area. So right away, let's understand when you get solar panels installed on your house, when you're driving down the road and you see solar panels on a roof line, there's actually four main ways that those got paid for. One is cash. The homeowner just paid cash for those panels. Two is they got some type of loan product. Maybe that was a home equity line of credit or a loan from the actual solar installer. Three would be they are leasing those solar panels. And then four would be a power purchasing agreement. So addressing three and four. If you are leasing panels or have a power purchase agreement and you think that is gonna raise the value of a home, you are mistaken. That is absolutely not gonna raise the value of a home and it is most likely gonna cause challenges in the sale of your home. Because don't forget, those contracts are usually long-term contracts, maybe 15 or 20 years in length. And if you wanna move out of the home three years into that contract, you have some big issues. Now those contracts are quote unquote transferable, but they can have quite the challenges. And don't forget, many of your prospective buyers don't necessarily value solar panels the way you do. So jumping into your lease agreement and having that monthly payment or jumping into a power purchasing agreement and having to buy power from those solar panels with a yearly escalation clause is probably not very attractive to that future owner. So just right away, leasing and power purchase agreement. If you have done that, you've signed that for your home and you're expecting that to increase the value of your home, that is absolutely not the case. And I do not recommend that to anybody. I think it's a bad way to go and can cause a ton of issues. I'll link to a video down in the description of Dave Ramsey where one of the callers called in and they were trying to get out of a lease contract on a home in Hawaii and it's causing all sorts of issues. Did or you say you did a lease on yeah. this? Yes, we did. Oh, jeez. Okay, what a mess. I think the value of that overall system was maybe thirty to $35,000, but to buy that contract out, so for them to buy that lease contract out, get the lien off of their property so they could sell their property, it was gonna cost them $78,000. And they only had $40,000 of profit in their home. That was all the equity that they had in their home. So they're in an extremely challenging situation. So leasing, power purchase agreement, actually I would say reduces the value of your home. It causes you much more challenges and can cause you to fall out of escrow many times just trying to sell your home. So don't do it, hopefully you haven't done it and if you have already done that, just know you gotta get ahead of that and you gotta stay very proactive during the closing process and try to really push that closing over the finish line. So you can see there's just a lot to consider to see is solar the right thing for my home and how should I purchase this? What's the best way to set myself up for success? And to help guide you, I am teaming up with Julian Todd Borden who has his own YouTube channel, really help educating homeowners to make sure they have the information they need. But Julian also provides one-on-one -on -one consulting to make sure you're getting exactly what you need from your home. Not only looking at your energy consumption currently, which is pretty common for most sales reps, but also looking at your current electrical system, what, what additional work might need to be done looking at your roof to make sure you're setting yourself up for success and then also what is your future needs to make sure you're sizing your system for today but also five years down the road don't forget most of these systems should be running for 20 to 25 years at 80 percent of their overall beginning capacity so this should be producing energy for your home for years and years to come and you need to do some planning and it helps to have a trusted advisor so you'll see a link in the description and that will jump you over to a page where you can fill out a small form, just a little bit of information, and then Julian or his assistant Cody will reach out to you and set up a one-on-one -on -one call where you can go over your home. He can help design that correct system, help give you those
those recommendations and really be that trusted advisor. And they also has some proven installers in your area that he can point you to, to make sure you're not getting an installer that's kind of unproven where they install your system and then they're out of business in two years and now you have nobody to maintain your system. So link in the description if you need Julian's help. So then let's go into if you got a loan or if you did cash. Let's focus on the loan first. So hopefully you did something like a home equity line of credit. I don't necessarily recommend you using all the equity in your home to get solar panels and then you move out in two years and you're trying to recoup the amount of that loan. That can be a challenge for you. And also if you got a loan from the solar installer, which is very common, you need to check and see if that loan is transferable. And if it is transferable, how long will that take? I currently have some friends going through this. They have a home that is sold. It's sold extremely quickly. It's sold over their asking price, but they have solar panels installed with a loan on those. It's only been installed for about a year, so they really want to transfer that loan to the next homeowner. The challenge is that transfer process can take up to 60 days. And usually something like that is not detected until you're just a couple days away from the closing table. And all of a sudden it blows up your closing date and you now have to wait two more months to sell your home. That can cause all sorts of issues. And specifically in this case, now the new homeowner wants to move in before closing, which again can cause all sorts of issues if you have a new homeowner move into your house you're going through closing and you don't make it to closing and now you have somebody in your house that you need to get out. So loans are a very realistic product that people use to buy solar panels, but just know that can cause issues in closing. Now, when it comes to increasing the value of your home, so does that panels actually increase the value of your home enough where you could pay off that loan and you don't need to transfer it? Now that's gonna depend on your area. Here in Illinois, the adoption of solar is still ramping up. So the chances that those future homeowners really want solar panels on their home is low. They're actually probably didn't even think about it. They might not mine solar panels on their home, but they're not gonna pay you 20 or $30,000 for that three bedroom, two bath, because they're just looking at school districts. Is it a safe place to live? Do they like their home? How's the neighborhood? You know, the common things that really sell real estate, location, location, location. There's no location, 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 solar, right? Those are the main factors. No, it's, it's all about location, schools, does it fit their lifestyle? So the chances that you get recouped if you're trying to sell only a few years into buying those solar panels or getting a loan on those solar panels is also pretty low. And then at least paying with cash. If you're trying to move within a few years of getting those solar panels, again, you're going to be challenged to recoup your investment. You haven't had enough time to harvest the energy savings per month, maybe 75, 100, 125, or even more dollars per month in energy savings to offset and pay down the cost of those solar panels. That's really the way you get your return on investment. Here in Illinois, because of federal tax credits and also state incentives, we get about seven or eight years to get a return on our investment. So if you're trying to move one or two years into buying solar panels, again, you're gonna be a little challenged to get that money back. But at least at that point, most likely it's not gonna cause challenges in selling your home. Now, if you are in California, maybe in San Diego, Hawaii, you're in a high priced energy market. So you're paying a high price per kilowatt hour and also the adoption of solar is much higher Then the future buyer might actually value those solar panels at, at close to the value that you paid for them because they know it's going to offset their power bill per month 200 300 400 or even 500 dollars per month which is a true true value but that's only going to be in those high priced energy markets and also markets where the adoption rate is much higher and maybe they're coming from a home with solar panels so they really want solar panels on their next home so that's my take. I am a fan of solar panels. I prefer buying those with cash. Hopefully you're gonna be staying in your home for those years so you can get return on investment. And then as the adoption goes up in your area, hopefully those new homeowners do appreciate and do value those panels to give you a little bit more for the sale price of your home. 
as it stands right now in Illinois and in most markets, it's not gonna increase the value of your home. But let me know what you guys think. Jump down in the comments, give me your feedback, and especially if you've sold a home with solar panels, did you feel like you got a premium for that? So thanks for joining me on this video and we'll catch you on that next one. Take care.